Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our preview for The Blacklist Season 9, Episode 20. Let's hope this is pronounced correctly. Calum Bank. Where we're going to visit the bank in the skies, <laughs> everybody. This this episode's probably going to be ridiculous, and I'm probably going to really like it. I feel like we've had a lot of episodes that are about, like, vaults or banks or saves. Like, there's been a lot of that going on this season, but this one is especially important. Like, we may actually be getting close to getting a legitimate answer. And I know this show does not like answers, but I I, I feel like we're going to actually learn something here. And the stage will be set for a two-part finale event that we can all get psyched up about. I'm excited. I, I, I'm excited, too. And, like, you know, you'll, you have an extra special reason to be excited at this point because the, the Grand Marvin payoff is seemingly coming here. Hopefully. It would be nice to, to have a win. And, you know, I know that it's very divided out there. Some yeah. people feel like if it's Marvin, it's going to be a pretty good payoff. I'm one of those people. I think that the story has been threaded for a very long time and has played out for years within the timeline of the blacklist and there's other people that feel that the, it, it's too easy it's too simple they want it to be really complicated but i mean to that i just got to be like we still don't really have answers on who reddington is and it yeah. is nine seasons <laughs> and i'm all for something complicated but sometimes just a good solid story with great payoff is really worth it to me and here we are with marvin there will be time for more mysteries and we will be here to discuss all of those so hit that subscribe button we have reviews previews all sorts of other good stuff i know we're nearing the end of this season but we ain't there yet no and there's still season 10 coming and we're gonna have lots of stuff to talk about and also follow us over on instagram matt and just tv we have a whole bunch of new pictures up including mm -hmm. matt who decided to drink a flaming hot mountain dew this weekend which i don't know why because <laughs> after he drank it and made like this face like I was like, That's accurate. I, I need to try it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are many questionable. It so bad. There are many questionable decisions that were made here. Number one, why did I spend actual real money on this? Number two, you saw that it was bad from my face and you still went for it. Yeah. So we've got pictures of Matt's face up there drinking drinking that Mountain Dew, Matt and Just TV. I did it for the lulls, everybody. All right. All right no. Okay. The, here's. All I need to do to get everyone excited for this episode is just read this synopsis that in an effort to reveal his true enemy, Reddington, he's turning to the task force to help ground a flying fortress bank. How is that not awesome? Oh, it's awesome. I'm I'm pretty excited about this. They've given us a lot of bangers in a row of great episodes. This is going to be good. I just know it. Flying fortress <laughs> bank. How can it not be good? There, there are a few things that I think we collectively enjoy. Heists yes. are always near the top of the list. Yes. I'm also on board with any sort of like weird hidden locate. Like this feels like national treasure in the sky. Like I don't know exactly how all this is going to work out. But we do know that this bank is connected in some way to Reddington's criminal empire. Because ultimately we've kind of learned a little bit already about the connections to LaCroix and LaCroix's wife. And how everything is seemingly tied into Reddington's own organization. Yeah, and I mean, this is where I'm kind of like, Marvin, like, what are you doing? He's a really <laughs> smart guy. So yeah. to then use one of Reddington's own banks to pay for this, I'm kind of like, ooh. You know, you've made a lot of really good moves here, and a lot of this was buried for a very long time, and it probably should have stayed buried. I mean, it just kind of popped off in a way that I think Marvin didn't expect it no. to. That tracker was buried. Like, yeah. <laughs> how did this all come together? So I think Marvin was probably just acting desperate at this point where he was just like everything's unraveling yeah. i can't get a handle on it he may have used up all his own money because i feel that marvin is very rich i am sure that reddington pays him extremely well but at this point you know he's going to be 
making all these hits and yep. paying for all these people to die, he's going to be running low on cash. So he may have been in a situation where he's just like, you know what? <laughs> Ryan Tess doesn't really use this bank anymore. And I'm really the person that's kind of in charge of all his finances. So he's not really, he'll never know this. <laughs> okay, Marvin, you know, we... It's Marvin, you screwed it up. It's pretty darn clear <laughs> that you were responsible for all of this. It's pretty darn clear that, yeah, you screwed up. Because here's two things you could have done that you did not do. Number one, form some weird shell company. I even have a name for you. You could call it Jarvin Marard or oh, something like right. that. It's better than having it, you paying people from Reddington's own funds. Or you could have called it Mr. Kaplan. Yeah, you could have thought that's that's even just better. Just pin it on somebody. Why not? Also, you know, just to, just to hype up another show we, we cover here on the channel, I hear in Albuquerque there's like a vacuum oh. repair person that you can call that'll help you kind of get off to a new life somewhere else. Yeah, we're covering Better Call Saul for those of you who <laughs> don't know. It is a really good final yeah. season. I feel like you may need another alternate identity and a new job somewhere else at this point, Marvin. Yeah. Staying here will do you no good. No, it's it's not looking that great for Marvin, which, you know, it really sucks. I really like Mr. Stevens. You guys yeah. know that. You've been here a little while. So it's going to it's gonna be tough if he actually ends up getting killed off by the end of the season. And I don't know how he continues on. <laughs> This is... He's busy on succession. He, he, which we also cover on the channel, no, but yeah, Fisher Stevens is incredible. I feel really lucky that we've gotten him mm -hmm. as much as we do. And like like you said earlier, like I love that we're getting a really good payoff with Marvin. I think the, the motive is set up there. The story has been built up there. The, yep. the one question I have for the Blacklist, though, is just like timing out some of these reveals when they did because it's like okay we already saw at the end of this past episode this is clearly someone in reddington's organization and you just look at some of the other people who are associated with reddington at this point hetty tadashi brimley like paula like who are the why would these people ever do what well, none of these other people can be taken seriously as candidates here no and some of the other names we've seen thrown around are like dembe and i'm kind of like uh yeah. i don't know what the motivation would be he's not really part of the organization anymore he doesn't have any ill will no. towards reddington he never did so i just don't think it's him some people are talking about the sisters and kind of like oh it's very convenient that they kind of showed up around that time yeah. and yeah it is but i just what's the motivation like i just that's the thing it, yeah. there needs to be motivation and marvin has the motivation but yeah. once again i do not think that he is working alone i think he is probably working with whoever's number two on the blacklist i think that that's the person that marvin wants to get put in the position to take over the empire whenever reddington was going to be done with it who is that person i don't know <laughs> i know you think it might be katarina yeah. I, I don't I don't think she has motivation to kill Liz, so I just don't know. That's where I think that that to me is where things are going to get really interesting. And I and you know I don't know how much we'll get into it in episode twenty, but I think we will get into it this season. That whole where is this Marvin story ultimately going to go? Because they want they're going to want to set up the end game here in some shape or form. And, you know, they were able to elevate Marvin to sort of this potential position of big bad. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, the greatness of Fisher Stevens, but then also the motive, the opportunity, everything else that we've had. It's just sort of like, you know, you're not going to be able to elevate a Paula. No offense to Paula. As much as I love her, I could just not buy her as a criminal mastermind or Brimley or like some of the... You're going to have to find someone else out there that is new and imposing if you're going to bring in a like genuine partner in crime for Marvin Gerard. Okay, so there's two other people that names are out there and one of them is Liz, that she's the person who's oh working with Marvin, but she is already number one on the blacklist. Yeah. She does not need to be number one and number two on yeah. the blacklist. And what is the motivation for her faking her death? Who knows? There just isn't one at this point, especially since it seems that Marvin is really getting everything together for the the Empire. Like he's taking the discs and like it doesn't make any sense. 
So the other name that's out there that we see all the time in the comments and we need to talk about is Scotty. And, oh boy. <laughs> and and why Scotty is not going to be on this show. Take it away, Matt. Okay. All right. All right. Blacklist Redemption fans. I hear you. I don't mean to laugh at I you guys. See you. I truly don't. I know you. I I'm laughing because I know where you're going. Uh, this is this. the this is the this is Listen, I don't want to be up here on this soapbox. I don't want to make people sad. But, you know, the Scotty people, even like the Mr. Solomon people. Okay, listen. The Blacklist Redemption, NBC wants to pretend that this never happened. And I'm not saying that, you know, it was a bad show. I'm not saying Ryan Eggold sucks or anything like that. I I, I like Tom. And I know a lot of people hate Tom, but it doesn't matter. They Then he did his job because (laughs) Tom was a character that did a lot of despicable things on this show. It is just an attestment to what Ryan did. They just don't want to really dive back into those waters because them diving back into those waters with Scotty or any of those other characters kind of just is reminding everybody that that show didn't work (laughs) and that that show failed. And because of that, they are moving forward and... That sucks for anybody wanting more closure there, but I just don't think anybody involved in Redemption is going to show up in season 10 and be like, hey guys, remember me? No. No, I, I, <laughs> I agree. I think that NBC is trying to pretend like that show never happened. It just didn't do well. People did not go over and watch it. And because of that, because it didn't work out and it didn't come back, I can't see them then wanting to bring a character over from a show that didn't work out to a show that's doing very well and thriving. I think the biggest thing I'm excited for with this upcoming episode is just, you know, because it's so obvious with Marvin at this point, I just, I want to see the moment when Reddington finds out for sure that it's Marvin. I want to see the look on his face. And if Marvin finds out that Reddington finds out about him, I want to see the look on Marvin's face. I want to see the confrontation because I truly, truly believe that Marvin was acting in love for Reddington, that it was not acting in revenge or he wants to be the person who runs the empire. I truly just think he saw that Liz was completely incapable of it. He said it many times over the years that Liz was not the person that was going to be able to run this empire. Marvin knows how many people are employed by Reddington and make money through Reddington, how many people were going to end up either losing their jobs or whatever was going to happen when she ran it into the ground or started bringing her own employees to be coming in and talking to Brimley like it all just was not going well I think he truly thought as his lawyer that he had Reddington's best interest at heart which is that Liz should not be running the empire and Reddington needed to pick a different (laughs) successor and this was the only way to make that happen to save Reddington's empire I'm so psyched. We're going to get these moments, hopefully. I hope so. A bank heist in the air. So many, so (laughs) many good things in this episode. So subscribe so you guys don't miss that. Our review will be up after the episode airs. Mm -hmm. And follow us on Instagram, Matt and Jess TV. We'll see you here next time.